Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another rapid update where we identify, summarize and comment on developments that impact access to newer healthcare technologies. Uh, videos only include resources in the, the public domain. Um, in this video, I want to speak about a document that was published uh, last year and it's been around for some time already. Um, and this is a, a document by Bupa Arabia um, published last year called the, the Rising Burden of Medication in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Practical Approach to Minimize It. Uh, it was coordinated uh, by Dr. Ayman uh, and his office at Bupa Arabia to focus on this very specific topic. So I want to highlight some specific elements and then just provide a commentary um, in this video. Um, um, uh, it starts off with a, a general introduction. Uh, Saudi Arabia is the largest spender in healthcare across the, the Middle East. It's related to lifestyle diseases as one of the major causes uh, behind the, the healthcare spending. Um, and that potentially, which is the major theme of this uh, document, is that uh, implementing a generic medicine framework may assist in achieving some savings uh, within the Saudi Arabian healthcare system uh, and improving the overall efficiency of the, the market. Um, and then the document goes on to provide additional uh, background in terms of numbers of um, folks afflicted with uh, lifestyle diseases in Saudi Arabia, which poses a, a major threat, and that potentially localizing pharmaceutical industry uh, may also be a complementary step uh, linked to a uh, complementary policy objective linked to this uh, generic medicine framework. And uh, I'll return to this uh, local manufacturing component um, and a couple of recommendations that the, the document provides at the, the end. Um, but here's a little bit of context and background about what a generic medicine is. Uh, for those that have been in, in the industry for some time, it's, um, um, it outlines the, the key themes of what a generic medicine is. Um, by equivalency um, within the context Hatch-Waxman Act, uh, putting in place a competition and patent term a restoration act or at least a, a legal framework to facilitate the, the entry of generic medicines into the, the market. So that's useful background information. Um, the, the document also just uh, briefly touches on uh, mistrust perceptions, communication issues related to generic medicines and improving its uh, diffusion uh, and use in, in society, that that's also another potential major step to overcome. Um, some background on the, the U.S. market, um, some uh, graphs that were, were in here. Uh, but when it becomes interesting is um, two tables that are presented in this document that discuss savings. This one is specifically in the United States, and it has a, a range of drugs uh, for on, on branded and generic alternatives that were available. Um, branded drug price versus a generic price and within the US context um, in excess mostly of 90% savings that were achieved um, and an improvement in competition uh, of course. Uh, the example, the experience in the, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is not comparable to the United States and, um, and we think there's a lot more work that would need to be done in this space. Um, they also include the, the case study of um, Abu Dhabi launching in 2018. Uh, the generic medicine policy framework to assist the now Department of Health that used to be called the Health Authority Abu Dhabi Department of Health Abu Dhabi in um, achieving savings, 60% savings in the pharmaceutical um, expenditure. And this section of the document just reflects uh, on that, that it's also then uh, created opportunities for domestic drug manufacturing in the, the UAE. Um, this is a, a little bit more about the regulatory market in Saudi Arabia that the, the Council for Cooperative Health Insurance, CCHI, would be a key uh, player in the, the future to potentially develop a generic medicine framework and implement it for use in the, the private sector across all health insurance companies, um, which is a proposal coming out of this document, um, but then also linking it to the, the public sector to ensure uniformity across both public and, and private sectors. Medication cost and, and savings, um, that there's a, a fairly significant private health insurance market of 11.5 million people, which is anticipated to grow a lot more uh, in the, the future, given the objectives of Vision 2030 and also the corporatization of healthcare and pushing on more responsibility onto the, the private healthcare market to provide benefits and, and coverage uh, to the, the expat uh, community. Um, and that uh, Bupa Arabia has already analyzed its medication utilization and found that diabetes treatments has a highest spending. Generic medicines are not available 
or have not uh, don't have a significant price difference compared to its brand name equivalent. And this table was instructive uh, in the sense that it provided a, a list of uh, branded medicines that are in the market um, if a generic alternative is available. And in Saudi Real, what the uh, average cost is compared to the generic e equivalents. And the, the comment that uh, uh, I want to share in, the, in this video is the the unique cyclical effect that the introduction of generics has and its impact on newer technologies. And what I mean by that is by rapidly introducing generic medicines into the market, improving the competition and the different alternatives that are available for one specific brand of medicine when it is off patent, um, it means that it frees up additional budget uh, within the health insurance market and generally within the healthcare system to judiciously apply it for um, for funding of newer healthcare technologies, specifically in the, the case of where there's no generic alternatives. Um, liraglutide, for instance, insulin aspartame. Um, aspart um, is another option. Um, here is, here's another one, Novomix, Novorapid, uh, Victoza, Lantus are, are just a, a couple of examples. And uh, what I meant by unique cyclical effect is that budget savings achieved with the generic medicine um, frees up budget that could be potentially utilized for funding newer healthcare technologies or redirecting it into other therapeutic areas and disease areas where it may be needed. So generic medicine policy is absolutely essential to ensure that there is this freeing up of budget within a healthcare system to allocate it to uh, newer technologies and improve the overall efficiency. And this happens year after year after year after year, assuming that there's a, a, good, a good generic medicine policy yeah, in place. Um, and the, the document then ends off uh, with some recommendations. So for the successful implementation of this framework in Saudi Arabia, we recommend the following. Regulators shall prepare a comprehensive national drug list. It has a list of all the patented medicines that are coming up for expiration and all the generic alternatives that are available. And that it would then be mandated for use in the Ministry of Health and also the CCHI. I'm not sure to what extent um, this recommendation has, has moved down the, the road, but this would be an a, essential first step. Um, on the other point that I mentioned a little earlier regarding local production of uh, generic medicines, which is a very similar uh, intention also from the, the UAE. Um, but here the, the thought is that um, Saudi drug cities or zones would be created uh, where international generic manufacturers and also domestic um, drug manufacturers would be incentivized to set up local production units. Um, given tax incentives uh, and, and other rebates, uh, um, you know, just to create a, a conducive policy framework uh, to support the, these companies to ensure domestic um, production. It would fit in quite well also with the objectives of Vision 2030. Um, and then also part of this national drug list is ensuring that um, yeah, all medicines have at least three to five bioequivalent generic uh, drugs that are available. Um, and I think the, the point here is related to improved uh, competition and alternatives that are available uh, to place uh, ongoing downward uh, pressure on medicine prices, but at the same time, freeing up resources that could be allocated to newer healthcare technologies as and when they become available in the, in the market. And the, the last uh, couple of points um, here that Bupa Arabia raised are related to education and training and addressing this um, um, a misconception, mistrust related to the, the use of uh, generics directed at healthcare professionals and these groups, physicians, pharmacists and nursing staff, uh, public sector and private sector, um, I assume, uh, and then also directing it to the, the general public through awareness and promotional campaigns. Um, and the, the last recommendation here related to the application of a co-payment uh, where patients may uh, choose to uh, purchase the branded medicine but at a copay, whereas the generic um, alternative is uh, fully funded by the, the public system. So um, these are still some recommendations um, that are active um, um, and that would need to be uh, further progressed uh, down the line. Anyway, that's a rapid update from the Senate. Thanks so much for listening. Take care. Bye.